Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Jamie here today with Nathan, and we're going to be talking about Hatchet, which is a 2006 film directed and written by Adam Green. And we've both been fans of this franchise for a while, so let's just say that straight away. <laughs> it's good. We went it's... into a film series excited. Yeah, definitely. So if you don't know anything about this, it was basically like, I'd, I'd say it's like a love letter to E slashes, really, isn't it, basically? The film starts off, we've got Robert England in a cameo with his son on a boat, the alligators hunters aren't there, just like on the swamp, just, you know, some funny it. dialogue. Nice, though, because like, Robert England must have had to have read some of this script and gone, no, I have faith in this, I'll, I'll appear. Hmm. True, because not just them, Tony Todd is a cameo as well. Yeah. And Kane Hodder as well, so there's three fucking horror legends right there. I mean, Kane Hodder was gonna be in it. Basically, uh, Victor Crowley, we don't we don't know Shuri, but he basically rips them apart, really. You get a taste of the gore in this point, don't you? In the first five minutes, I want to say, you see... I don't want to say a broken body, because that's underselling it. The top half is over here, the, the bottom half's over there. Amazing, amazing special effects. And obviously that's just a great way to start the film. And from there we go to the title sequence with Marilyn Marley Manson. fucking <laughs> Manson. So we go from there, we're in a Mardi Gras, which is in New Orleans. Mardi Gras, a, baby. Lot of, a lot of boobs and beads going about, obviously. And we're introduced to our main character, who's Ben. Well, we think he's going to be the main guy, but we'll get into that later. we got Ben and his friend Marcus. And Adam Green's actually in this point is a little cameo. They're like, they're going to stay at Mardi Gras while them two want to go on the uh, Swamp Tour, don't they? What was his end credit? Was it buddy number three? Probably, yeah. It's a generic guy number three or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they want to go on this haunted Swamp Tour. So, they go to um, Reverend Zombie is his name. And obviously, they're knocking the door. And Tony Todd comes out just amazing, like uh, Tony Todd always is with that voice. Man, fucking out. <laughs> Serenade me, Mr. Todd. Serenade me. But this is just a comic because uh, obviously, you know, Tony Todd, he's a, I'm not going to say he's expensive, but he can only afford the cameo for this film. He yeah. appears later on in the other films, yeah. obviously, but Big his fan. cameo was good. Oh, yeah. He, he's on screen, I want to say, for two minutes at tops, mm. and you remember his scenes because it was good. Oh, yeah. He left an impression, this mysterious figure with no insurance. I just love at the end that he drops his accent. He's like, be careful walking on the sidewalk. And he just slams the door. <laughs> be careful walking on the sidewalk. One thing that I do think we have to bring up, though, is like, even though Friday 13th is a classic in it and in its formula, Campers, Jason, dream sequence, with the Hatchet series, it fills up that development time with good backstory and humour, which I hmm. think works perfectly here. True, definitely. And also the film, like, it don't drag at all, does it? Like, with some Friday themes, we're like, come on, man, let's get to the point. But with this, it just flies by. <laughs> with Friday, with, it sounds like we're shitting on Friday, but with the Fridays, like, towards the end, I'm like, kill the bitch, do something. <laughs> but with this, I'm like, yeah, more, keep running, let Victor find more victims, this is good. And speaking of victims, we got, like I said, we got Ben, the main character. We got Marcus, his friend, the old couple who were just happy to be they're there. Just so lovely. <laughs> their their death hurt me because they're just like your typical nice people. Nothing wrong. They did nothing. They did not deserve it. Justice for the old people. We also got the uh, pawn director with his two like people who he's tricked, the two girls, and then we got Mary Beth who doesn't really say much straight away, but we find out more as the film goes on. <laughs> She'll never be Danielle Harris. No, Danielle Harris. But like we said, she does a decent job this actress. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know what her name is, but yeah. Danielle Harris all the way. Yeah, we missed one person off that list. Oh, the, the actual mother boat. fucking boat driver. <laughs> My guy. He's such a con artist. I love how he just like Brilliant. drops his accent just to see some shit and he's, you know, constantly back at it. He drops his accent and then drops that accent so you get to his actual accent, which is <laughs> default American. <laughs> love it so obviously they're on this swamp tour and you know it's kind of corny it's like the tour guys like there's ghosts and stuff like that but then yeah. we pass Victor Crowley's house and we hear you know the first lore of Victor Crowley really don't we I like he got the hatchet inside his face but we find out more later on but you know it bothers me that they were trying to push hatchet face for a little name like, oh yeah no just just hatchet will do or Victor Crowley Victor Crowley's much better no doubt Jason Voorhees was an ugly kid, but nothing hurts my <laughs> stomach and soul like seeing Victor Crowley as a child trying to eat porridge. Oh, oh yeah, we'll kiss that in a minute. Disgusting. 
So obviously it's a shitty boat and it ends up crashing into a rock and then it starts pouring down rain. So they decide, you know, let's get off this boat. And then one by one going across until the old guy gets bit by an alligator, which, you know... <laughs> Not great. Not great. You don't want that to happen. And once the, this happens, Mary Beth reveals that she's got a gun, doesn't she? So we start figuring I, out this girl's I, there for a reason. <laughs> she's not just there for a swamp tour. She's there for a reason. So obviously we find out why she's there. The uh, beginning bit with her dad, That's that was a dad and brother at the beginning. That's why she's here, because it's been a few days. She's not heard from him, so she's hunting him. Just hunting to see what happened, basically. And here's what April's thought. We go to a flashback. We start hearing about Victor Crowley. With his dad played by Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder plays Victor Crowley and Victor Crowley's dad. So double the Kane Hodder inside this film. <laughs> but obviously he's, uh, he's deformed, isn't he, his son? So he's like feeding porridge. Obviously Kane's looking after him. But, you know, kids be kids. They're always like taking a piss out of him and stuff like that. Until one day when they get older, they burn him inside the cabin, don't they? <laughs> At what point do you think, ah, oh, yeah, te teasing him because of how he looks, that's fine. Let's burn his fucking house down. What was your process? Please explain. Because I never looked at someone and thought, I dislike you. Arse and it is. Never crossed my mind. Kane being the great guy that he is, he comes back to try and help his son, but, you know, she puts the hatch inside the door and he ends up hitting his son. <laughs> Could have gone round the back door. Could have. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure houses like that used to have a little um, door on the floor so you like, could get underneath it. Oh, no, yeah, true. No, no, patch it at the door. Go back to the uh, normal timeline. The old couple obviously has been bit by an alligator. So they figure, let's go to this cabin and look for help or something. And Victor just comes out. He's like, All right. <laughs> Wait, before we get to Victor, can we point out that they're having this conversation? They talk about the other house during the tour. They're like, that wasn't Victor's Crowley's house. That was, you've just been stood next to it all this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I not, thought to, bring, <laughs> I not thought to bring that one up a bit. All like, listen, I know we're having a great story, but the house is right there. Right there, literally in front of us. She knew what she was doing. But yeah, <laughs> fucking Victor Crowley's here. Yeah, he comes out, and then there's where we get, like, this is probably the best kill of the entire fucking film, this. He rips the, uh, it's the old woman, in it. He gets a, he's like fucking, the, the camera yeah. goes round, 360 there, and he's just, fuck, oh my god, I can't show it because that is graphic as fuck, but, oh my god. It also has the death of the old man, and Victor just pushes him to the ground. Actually, no, I think he slices at his back, he falls to his knees, Victor grabs his shoulder, and with his hatchet, just oh, yeah. fucking nails him in the shoulder to the point where his arm has come off, but through there. Mm. And he just pushes his ground and aims for the old lady. So obviously like everyone yeah. starts running. He don't give a fuck. People, you know, they're panicking at this point because you just saw a woman get her face ripped off and the old guy get his arm like so. I think just seeing him, let alone the kills. The kills are a whole different level of PTSD. The next person to die is the porn director who is like by himself at this point and Victor just like completely twists his head all the way around. It's fucking amazing because the effect they put on his neck you believe his spine is following the twist and filling his neck up. The guy that does the special effects in this film is a god. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially for a low budget as well. This isn't like oh, some yeah. AAA Hollywood fucking release or anything like that. So we go back to the cabin. The uh, Ben and Mary Beth are going to look for weapons, aren't they? And she ends up stumbling on the corpse of a dad and a brother. So she starts, you know, breaking down a little bit from that. And then... Victor Carla comes back once again and it's the belt sander in it and he puts it to that girl's fucking face. But that, that belt sander kill and she's not dead straight away either from it either. Is she? She's bleeding no. out and shit. Yeah. He only takes off like it's not the bottom jaw is like hanging off. It's gone. The sander has removed all of this. <laughs> Beautiful. You know she's in pain. And then the um the tour guy gets killed with a shovel first. He gets his leg chopped off with a shovel on it, so he's on the floor. And then fucking, he just puts the, what would you put it, the, the edge of the shovel on his head yeah. and he just, fucking boom, head gone. <laughs> he had the best death, not in terms of visuals, but his was the quickest. He got so lucky considering what we see Victor Crowley do. He got away with it. True. And then obviously the girl who got a face cut off, she's still alive and Victor picks her up and impales her on the fucking shovel. <laughs> showing how much of a monster victor is because she's a bottom jaw lighter but he still flawlessly picks up this person and just slams him i think it's mary beth who mentions he's a ghost trapped in the night that he died basically yeah. that's what she says in it and then ben decides to let's burn him i think i've seen some gasoline inside the uh, cabin so that's their plan 
<laughs> I love this bit. Ben's inside the cabin looking for the gasoline and he just gets an arm thrown at him. <laughs> and he looks and Vix is just throwing the uh, body at him. So they set Vix on fire and we think, oh yeah, you know, they're gonna burn him to death. But what happens? The rain comes and puts him out. <laughs> that is the biggest fuck you to survivors ever <laughs> so at this point they have to start running but i mean they, they run through the cemetery don't they so they must have been closer than they thought to like civilization you know what i mean had to have been mm. but it's this way it gets fucking brutal because he, uh ben falls on the floor down there and he just starts dribbling inside his mouth oh my god this is some evil dead flashback here no doubt but it's just brutal i was dry even it was gross <laughs> Victor's got him pinned down, mouth open. You're like, oh, he's gonna bite his face off. He's gonna like choke him out. He dribbles in his mouth. Just put me down. Put me personally down if something like that dribbles in my mouth because I don't want to go. You know. And then he uh, he rips Marcus's arm off, doesn't he? Marcus, Marcus got it probably like the second worst. True, because he's still bleeding out, and then he picks him up and he smashes him off the fucking one of the. I don't know. It's not a gravestone, but it's like one of the, the, tomb, the tombs. Yeah. The tomb, yeah. So that was brutal, <laughs> you know. So the final two left now is Mary Beth and Ben, who we think at this point we still think Ben's the main character, but we'll find out about that <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> and I love this shot because they think they're about to get away out and they find a boat, and then out of nowhere, the, uh, is it the gate post or the gate pole or something? Yeah. It comes flying, doesn't it? And it hits Ben right inside the foot. <laughs> It's just, Victor just comes out, he's like, Rawr. he's so happy with his shot. Such a unit. Send this man to our next Olympics. He, because he's destroying the enemy team. And Mary Beth has the idea, you know, just push the uh, pole forward, which would fucking kill because it's stuck inside his foot, but he pushes it forward and a Victor comes and he just impales himself on it, basically. <laughs> but we thought that was it, and then more blood comes out of his mouth straight onto Ben's face, so, you know, double trouble there, man. <laughs> So like I said, we find the Mary Beth's dad's boat to get away on that. And then we think, oh, you know, this is like Friday and it's just a dream sequence. Something's going to pop out. But nope. obviously Vixer does pop out and he grabs Mary Beth down to the water. And this is the, I love this twist this, because yeah. she's stuck on the uh, thing for a little bit and then she sees Ben's hand come for her. So she thinks, oh yeah, you know, you grab on the hand. But really it's Victor Crowley holding Ben's hand because he's chopped it off and Ben's just bleeding out inside the boat. Yeah, because when <laughs> she comes back up, she sees... Ben's body, he's just gone. He's just like, uh... It ends right there, though, don't it? I guess that's... I mean, it's not a complaint, but it just ends at a cliffhanger. Like, Vix yeah. is just screaming, and it just cuts to black. It's an amazing ending, because it's like... Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen. True. If it was oh, Friday, she would have woke up. She would have woke up beside the hospital, and it'd be like, oh, it was just a dream. Ben's six... fine. <laughs> it happened six years ago. But yeah, this I forgot how good it was, man. But it's just to uh, go into the overall rating, I guess. I'm... I'm torn. I don't know if I should give it a 7 or a 8. What are you going to give it? This film fixes all the problems of what like the start of films do. It fills you with the lore. It has funny bits to kill that dead air, and the kills are brutal. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to give this film an 8. I'll agree with you. I'll give it an 8 as well, definitely. Because like yeah, you said, okay. everything, it's, it doesn't drag. It doesn't, it doesn't drag, I mean. It doesn't drag at all. you got funny characters, funny moments. The kills, oh my god. The only thing it's missing, like, the soundtrack was good, but there's no, like, iconic, like, you know, Michael, Jason, you know, like, they have their own signature sound. Victor yeah. doesn't really have that, does he? Yeah, it? he does. It's a sound does when Kid him eating some porridge going... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, I think... I think you remember Victor Crowley more for the, uh, gore. If you, you love gore, like, watch this film if you've not already seen it. And there he watch is. I've ordered, I ordered mine last night. Did mine's you now. Yeah. Watch it. I don't own figures, unlike Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know figures. This is how much I love Hatchet. I w I got figures of this. But yeah, Go next week we'll review part two. And I mean, the series, it is good. It's not like it drops off in quality, but, you know, there's more. Th it gets more serious than it. There's less comedy, yeah. but it's still, you know. There's still funny bits, but it focuses more on the, like, the unstoppable monster than the survival of the characters. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you're new. Check out Nathan's social links down below. Until next week with Hatchet part two. And a bit.